So here we can see how beautifully these incorporate. Uh, we have the bat, which we are going to talk about in a minute when we talk about the winds. Uh, we have the flames of the fire suit, obviously. Uh, we also have um, the water coming in the Ace of Tides and this beautiful growth, uh, the sun, that kind of the whole uh, embodiment of the gardens. So these have been changed from air or swords to winds, from wands or fire to staying with fire, uh, from cups or water to tides, and from uh, earth or pentacles uh, to gardens. And I, to me that makes very good sense and I don't think that that would confuse anybody uh, even if they were used to um, the traditional suit. So I don't think that that's going to be a problem whatsoever. So let's go ahead and put these back together. And so I'm quite, I'm quite happy with uh, the aces there. Now let's just talk for a moment, since we did talk about the changes to the suits, let's just talk for a moment the changes to the um, court cards, where we have instead of a page, we have a jester, we have a stranger instead of the knight, and the ki then we of course have the queen and the king here. So this is the traditional, uh, these two are the traditional, uh, but they don't really change that I can see. It talks about here, uh, the jester can represent one who amuses, assists, comforts, or evokes feelings of familiarity. It also talks about them being more lighthearted, right? Uh, the childlike aspect of it here. Um, and it, the stranger can represent one who mystifies, opposes, challenges, or makes uneasy. Um, in the tarot reading, the jester may suggest a child, while the stranger may an adolescent energy, that active energy. Um, so I don't think that they're, in terms of reading the cards, I really don't think that those changes are going to make a major uh, difference in how we go about reading the court cards, but it's important to note. Uh, but it does make sense, and I'm quite intrigued by the idea of the stranger. Um, it does also talk about... Um, how we move from the more cosmic and universal nature of the major uh, to the more uh, concerns and events of everyday life and human nature in the four suits. So it kind of gives that introduction there. I did want to make sure to point that out uh, before moving on and hitting the court cards. So here we're going to start with the winds, and what's interesting is that it, uh, it says that the artist has employed the bat, a frequent motif in her earlier works, as a reoccurring symbol for cards throughout this suit. It is the only mammal capable of true flight. These animals are a fitting symbol for the air element, whether in motion or asleep hanging from their airborne roost. So that's why it's used, because it is a mammal capable of flight. So... I will have to come to love the bat a little bit more than perhaps I did. I'm, I'm not necessarily afraid of bats uh, or anything like that. We have bats out where I grew up and you could throw stones and things up and they would zip down and I don't want them all dive bombing me, but I'm not particularly afraid of bats. Um, so anyways, we, uh, I'm going to, of course, go a little bit quicker. I know people would say, oh, I wish you'd do the same as you do in major, but it really would be long. Uh, and they don't even, even in the book, it's pretty short. You can see that it's pretty qu quick there. Uh, but it talks about the aces as being seeds, essence, or the full potential, just like we talked about with the jester. So I quite like that, uh, way that they address the aces. Um, this talks about the innate duality in all the number two cards is amplified in the suit of winds, which is, is, is itself linked with conflict, intellect, and decisions. It says a being with a single bisected head here is shown with two separate and opposing bodies. One body appears to be made of wood. The other uh, is shown as reptilian and more organic. See, this looks like it's being built with rivets, and this is more organic. Um, each has a weapon drawn and ready to use. So there is a tension that leads to an impasse. Very interesting, isn't it? That's quite, and then we also, of course, have the bat wing still there. So I did read about that because that's quite unusual. 
here we have the three of winds as sort of the throwing of the knives. Uh, I think it's beautifully to pick, taking what is the traditional imagery and making that really um, pop and work with the rest of the deck. I love this Four of Winds because it's very meditative, very serene. I like the animals in the tree and standing by, and he just looks like he's in a pose of meditation, taking that break before getting back into battle. Really beautifully done. Look at the Five of Winds. So here we can see the conflict of you know, kind of riding off to war here. At least that's what it looks like is happening. Um, Yep, warriors are charging furiously towards us from a distance. Beautiful. Here we have the uh, Six of Winds, which is usually kind of getting away from a difficult situation. Uh, instead of on the, obviously, on the boats, uh, we have this man with bat wings uh, flying off of his own accord. So I quite like that as well. Um, trying to get to where I was. I do like the change of scenery that we're seeing over here too, kind of from the darkness to the light over here. I quite like that uh, image that we have there. Here we have the Seven of Winds, uh, which I had pulled in my, is my very first card for Veronica in the live chat, uh, which does talk, I really like the keyword solitary action, uh, and that we don't always know what's going on and what is the story behind it, what's, what's happening behind it. Uh, I quite like that as well. I love this. I think this is beautiful. She's bound, right? But look at, does that, I don't know if it's just me, but that looks as if the key is in the lock. Let's see if it says anything in the, yes. Unaware that the key to escape her prison confines, confines rests in the keyhole of the door. I think that's fantastic. We have a little random bat up here. I think that's an absolutely gorgeous eight of winds. Nine of Winds, definitely not what you normally see. She is definitely sleeping unrestfully, it talks about. Um, this is about worry and apprehension and being overwhelmed and sort of in this sort of dreamlike state where um, things may appear larger, more difficult than they might seem as we see, but definitely a much more, in a sense, tamed version of the Nine of, of Swords, uh, which is fine. I think it still leaves that idea of mental unrest. I love this Ten of Winds, and again, it's not that I'm a huge fan of bats, but Ten is a completion, and so I love this because it is dark, but the worst is over and the sun is coming up, uh, because that is, you know, Tens are about completion, and I really have never been overly fond of the, you know, Ten Swords in an animal or a person of the Ten of Swords, and so I quite love that. Uh, again, not a huge fan of jesters uh, or clowns of any kind. Uh, I'm not in t thrilled with the, the sword suit, to be honest. Um, but this does talk about a gentle and tender soul, someone who may help in solving a problem. Uh, we have a bat here with, I'm not sure what this is coming out. The Jester of Winds is the most childlike of the four Jesters, with an ambiguous gender. Uh, messenger bringing you ideas of working through challenges. So we're going to put these aside so we can take a look at the Jesters. I'm, you know, he, this is just odd to me. Uh, and of course, I, it's a surreal art, so I expect it to be odd. Um, Staring opaque eyes and serpentine coils round, winding around his ethereal airborne form. The stranger of winds presents a daunting and perhaps even terrifying figure. His incisive approach cuts right to the core of the matter. Hmm. Well, I don't know. That one I'm not really sure. We have that sort of clown thing going on around here. I'm just not entirely sure what's going on here. So if you want to add some insight here, uh, but I do think that's a little creepy. Um, I do love her clothing. Um, 
you know, of course we still have the bats uh, at the head as well, but I do love that she is, as it says in the guidebook, uh, she's facing her king in a very direct manner, even confrontational, and that her posture is clear and she has an honest expression uh, which reflects her confident and forthright manner. So I do quite like uh, what this uh, says about the Queen of Wands. And then we have the king, of course. He is being more thoughtful. Uh, bent arms resting on his hips. Uh, he is an attentive and considerate counterpart to his forceful and dynamic queen. That's interesting, isn't it? This king is someone who looks at all angles of a situation before acting. So I actually like these two. I'm, I'm just not entirely thrilled, especially with the knight here. He's, he's a little uh, interesting for me for a knight. That brings us to the suit of fire, uh, which is called fire in this deck. Uh, it does talk about the fire with intuition, skills, desires, passion, traditionally known as the wands, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Being you know, So it does give you a, a quite a lot of information there, which I quite love. So he, I think this is gorgeous, and this is what is on the box of the deck. Uh, which I think is stunning to a fire. Um, a man pauses in his journey and stands contemplating a far off town. Uh, he has a lantern. We don't know if he's going towards or away. Um, and it says that this has much to do with gathering, harnessing, and directing energy. How gorgeous is that card? Look at the three of fire. I love this. I don't I don't think I've ever seen this before. Voyage or travel, expanding horizons. I love this. This card, it says, focuses on the long view and gaining perspective. That's gorgeous. Here we have the four of fire, very celebratory, as we see often. It's very different in art. Um, I don't often always like when we see a real big shift in art when most of the art is one way and then we have a shift. Of course, we do see that with the war card as well. Uh, to me, most of the cards, you know, there's, there's different aspects. This one is a little bit different. Most of it all does seem to go very well together um, artistically. This is quite different, but I still really love the card. Um, so I'm not saying that negatively, it just stands out to me. Um, even this one a little bit. Look at the Five of Fire. I love that. We have the warring um, skeletal warriors here because, of course, Five is about disruption here. Look at the beautiful Six of Wands. Success is at hand. Look at that. That's gorgeous. I am also... I guess we're talking about the, the cards in which I am not always a fan. And I'm always, not always a fan of the Six of Wands imagery either. Um, sometimes it just is strange to me or doesn't quite work or looks uh, arrogant more so. Uh, this is absolutely stunning. Look at the Seven of Fire. He's going through the fire. A man stands in front of a post around which a great fire burns. He doesn't appear to be bound and might be able to remove himself from the blaze. But he's. But it says that it represents challenging situations encountered when maintaining one's position. It's that needing to hold, taking a stand, even though you know there's something to be quite afraid of or worried about. Beautiful. Eight of fire is a volcano erupts. Interesting. That would normally be the Eight of Wands. Like the Volcano, this card deals with energy being gathered, stored, and then ultimately released. You normally see all that you know, wand energy going across, but that's quite, that's interesting. I like that, actually. Uh, nine of Fire, we have obviously looks to be gladiators of some kind that are, are fightings. They are mastery of the craft. Uh, a need to persevere despite setbacks. So he's been maybe kind of brought to his knees, but he's still going to fight on. Interesting. 
I know I'm saying interesting too much now, but I do quite like that. Look at these little chest pieces. They have kind of regular looking head, top halves, and their bottoms are the chest, chest pieces. So this is normally the Ten of Wands where we're weighted down. So I'm, this one's quite interesting. Let's see what it says. On the battlefield of a chessboard, the white knight over here, or the, I'm sorry, the white king sends his knight into action against the opposing black bishop. Here is the undisputed leader in complete control of the organization he directs. He must continually confront the often unrelenting and overwhelming burden of responsibility. Oh, so we can see him directing the pawns and the pieces, but he's also responsible for those pawns and pieces. That's pretty cool. That's cool. Uh, so here we have the Jester of Fire, so we're in the courts. Uh, I like him better, actually, than the swords. So we have very interesting strangers, I have to say, uh, so far, of the two that I've seen. It says, the heat generating by its flaming hair lifts and carries the Stranger of Fire across great distances. Uh, this reveals an unbridled and impulsive character. I guess because these, to me, are very difficult to actually see the figures uh, in. Interesting. But I like how it's the heat that actually lets him skim across the water. That's pretty cool. I think that's beautiful. That's a really beautiful Queen of Fire. I love that she's barefoot. I love that the lantern held in her hand or candle is just a huge flame for a small fire. It's beautifully done. And, uh, interesting. Look at him playing with fire. He almost has, almost gets, the, the helmet here kind of has a feel to like a, um, a fireman's helmet in a way. It just gives me that's the first thing I thought of. Um, martial attire, it says, but I kind of got a little bit of a feel of a fire, a fire helmet. Uh, so pretty cool there. Uh, that brings us to what I think is going to be my favorite suit, which is the Eight the Tides, uh, which would be water in the deck. And, of course, it talks about how hearts in the mod modern playing cards, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces in the Zodiac. So I quite like, again, the little bit that it's telling about the, the suit. Uh, but then look at what we have here as the Two of Tides. I love this. So this would be the Two of Cups. A dog and a wolf meet in loving and affectionate encounter. Oh, I love it. Look at the Three of Tides. I really think I like all of the Tides card. Look at the Four. So this would generally be the Four of Cups, which I very often do not like the images of. Uh, this one, uh, we have a man and a woman facing opposite directions in a boat. The vessel floats on still water. It does show a detachment because they're facing back to back. Uh, so that's quite interesting. I think of stability. So we can also think of being back to back as a stable. They're kind of have each other's backs. Uh, but it can lead to detachment, obviously, if they don't turn around. So I could definitely work with this card. Look at how gorgeous this is. The five of tides. Look at the coffins. A pregnant woman stands silently in a cemetery, deep in remembrance of one who has passed on. But look at the new growth here. The particular loss or imbalance here lies in the realm of the emotions that the suit of tides embodies. The soon-to-be-born child is a reminder that growth, hope, and the cycles of life go on despite and throughout any loss or tragedy. That is stunning. I think this is definitely my favorite ever Five of Cups. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'm going to set that one aside. Six of Cups is absolutely, oh, Tides, sorry, is absolutely gorgeous. Look at the Seven of Tides here. We have all of this um, treasure, like in an underwater cave here. Uh, but we also have snakes here. Uh, so this is quite interesting. This talks about overwhelming options that can confront us and being very careful. Obviously, you don't want to grab the snake instead of the real treasure. 
this also or gorgeous eight of tides I had this was one of the cards that really spoke to me in this particular deck um, it says with as with all the eights of the minor arcana this card addresses limitations and constraints um, with a particular emphasis on the application of energy and the will to transcend them. I really like this guidebook. Nine of Tides. Again, very different art uh, here, but I quite love it because this is um, traditionally known as the wish card. It's like starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. Wish I may, wish I might have this wish I wish tonight. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's perfect. Love this suit. And then a beautiful, beautiful Ten of Tides with the gorgeous kind of rainbow colored clouds, harmony, happy. It's just stunning. Probably, I've never been a fond of the like rainbow with the ten cups over the top of it. Uh, this is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I love this suit. Yeah. Hands down, I will say so far, with one to go, that I will take the, the suit of tides is um, stunning. I really actually quite like this clown. Uh, Jester, sorry. Not a big fan of Jester's, but this one's not so bad. And this is actually really beautiful. So we can see there's kind of masks going on with the knights. Let's see if I can. Uh, it might obviously help. See, we can see the mask that's going on here. Uh, let me see. Can I find the... The mask here as well. So it's more mask and motion. You can definitely see... Oops, you can't see them all. And we haven't gotten to, obviously, the last one. You can definitely see the motion of the knights in the, in the strangers. So that's... Uh, I quite liked seeing that. Look at this beautiful Queen of Tides. I think she's gorgeous. I think all the queens might be masked, too. I might have to be with the thin masks. Well... Not so much with the Queen of Winds, though. Very beautiful. I love that. Look at the King of Tides. I love both of these. These are stunning. It just looks like water energy. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And that brings us to the Ace of Gardens, uh, which would be Pentacles or Earth uh, energy. And uh, here we have the Two of Gardens with the Juggler, which we often see. Very collage this one. Uh, but it definitely evokes that energy. Uh, beautiful Three of Pentacles. We have him mastering his uh, craft, right? Um, as he's painting the, the figure on the bed, which I quite love. But you also have to work in conjunction with another person. Beautiful. Look at the Four of Pentacles with the marionette. Earthly power, possessiveness, selfish. A puppeteer manipulates a marionette whose appearance eerily mirrors his own. This imagery brings to mind themes of control, particularly self-control, as well as complacency and avoidance or resistance to change. That's quite interesting. I will definitely be sitting with that particular card because that's really an interesting Four of Pentacles. Hmm. I love this. This is probably one of my favorite five of uh, gardens or earth. A man sits amid squalor in the shadows on the outskirts of time. Despite his outcast status, he appears less de defeated than the dormant figure whose feet are visible in the foreground. This card reflects loss or instability, focusing on one's position within the social order. Very powerful. I don't see that. I would like to have seen like a, a, the bright light of, say, a window. Even if it wasn't a stained glass window, I would have liked to have seen that shine of, of light. I of hope we do see uh, places of that here and here where light's coming through. Um, but uh, it's still very powerful. Here we have the Six of Gardens. Uh, a little more. Um, she's being offered a bouquet here. Uh, kind of giving it out. We can't see who's giving it. Uh, so there's still the idea of generosity. This is quite a collage ones, one, which is a favorite of mine, is when you can really see the collaging, but it's just, it's still gorgeous. This is absolutely stunning. 
Seven of Gardens. A farmer a gar or gardener sleeps in an outdoor setting. As he dreams, his entire existence seems to meld with nature's grandeur and the fruits of his labor. Love that. Eight of Gardens. We always see somebody hard at work, and here we have what seems to be sort of a, I don't know, it's got like a melding mask on, almost like, and he's alchemy here going on, uh, esoteric tool. Oh, yep, it talks about alchemy here, but it's dedication and, and you know, pursuit of expertise. Here we have the Nine of Gardens, which is generally, we have the, here we have a, uh, um, there's usually a bird uh, there, and we do have, uh, what is that? I'm, I'm totally blanking on the bird standing there, and I know what it is, uh, but I am completely, they're usually in the front lawns, and people joke about having them in the lawn. Total blank, very luxurious. She looks um, successful. Uh, she has that sense of refinement in the fan there. Uh, I, w I prefer to see a bird of prey here. That's just, I just love that imagery, but still, it's very clear what it is. Ten of Gardens, uh, beautiful. It has that other style of artwork that kind of goes along more uh, with the Four of Fire and even with the Seven of Winds, uh, but it's quite beautiful. Um, a young woman is encompassed by the symbols of great family wealth, residence, land, fields, and the crops. So that shows that sense of success there. Here we, I do quite like this jester as well, at least compared to the others. The stranger, again, the mask. I'm starting to get the feel for it. This is beautiful. This to me almost seems like that could go with the winds, at least the top part of it. That's really beautiful. That's my favorite of the just of the strangers, um, so to speak. I think she is stunning. She's one of my favorite ones of the queens. Uh, she just looks regal. I love the blue colors, the butterflies there. Gorgeous. And then here we have the King of Gardens. So there we have uh, all of the cards. Um, so, you know, it has jesters. Not a huge fan. This is my least favorite of the jester, uh, but I can work with it. I can er work with that playful energy. That's more playful. Uh, I like that one. He's not so playful. He looks kind of determined to me. Um, and this one just looks a little creepy. You know what it is? I just looked at it. It's the tilt of the head, and it kind of reminds me of Blade Runner, of those kind of clown, uh, cloned... Um, cyborgs that were dressed up like dolls and she d jumps around and she kills people that's kind of what this reminds me of <laughs> uh, but there we have it some stunning cards these are uh, the artwork on these cards to me is a little bit different than some of the artwork uh, with the rest of the deck but it isn't at all jarring to me it still works within the context in terms of court, this queen and king, I think, are absolutely spellbindingly beautiful. Uh, definitely some of my favorite cards. I love this five of tides. I love the eight of tides. Really all the tides. Love that. Love, I mean, how can I not? I'm, I'm a huge fan of apocalypse fiction. So the very fact that this is an apocalyptic uh, <laughs> landscape, just it's just stunning. Stunning. I mean, I love the death. This is probably my, my favorite six of fires. I love the drowned. I just love this. It's not it's simple compared to some of the artwork, but it really stands out. I really love that. Very powerful. Uh, that's my favorite of the strangers. But yeah, some beautiful, beautiful cards uh, in this uh, stunning deck. So um, let's take a look at some of the, um, it's quite a tall deck. It's a little bit hard actually to get my fingers around. So I am definitely considering trimming it even though I think it's really gorgeous how it is. So I'm, I'm gonna have to think on that. It, it shuffles well but it's really hard for me and I have pretty long hands uh, and it's pretty hard for me to get a grip on half of the deck in order to give it a good shuffle. Uh, so that's something to keep in consideration but as I have seen they are quite easy to trim beautifully and leave uh, the stained glass intact which would be important to me. So okay so in the back of the guidebook which I have to say 
you know, really, really think that uh, for a very concise, not overly, you know, in-depth guidebook, did a really fantastic job. I'm, I'm really impressed with this. Uh, but in the back, there are actually two uh, tarot spreads here. One is a four card uh, based on the winds, and it's based on directions. Uh, and then there is a five card fire and smoke um, uh, reading. So let's just take a quick look at those because, you know, I like to see what they do with the readings uh, in a guidebook. Uh, so here again we have a four directions. Uh, so this is about when you're being pulled in different directions. This will help you to differentiate between forces that are beneficial and forces that are working against you. So let's take a look. And they start from east, south, uh, west and north is how they are, you know, have it numbered anyways. Give it a good shuffle here. Again, they're a little difficult to grab because they are quite tall. Let me see, do I have my... Here's my Margaret Peterson. They are just a little uh, shorter than Margaret Peterson, which can be difficult to grab a hold as well. So they're quite a tall card. Um, so that's not surprising uh, given, uh, but yeah, I have to, I do have to work at it a little bit. They also seem perhaps a little thicker. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're definitely a little bit thicker and that's what matters when you have the tallness back. I don't know if you can see this, but they're actually a thicker, it's a thicker deck. So the cards are thicker and that's where when you have a tall deck plus a thicker deck, you've got to get your fingers not just up but around enough to grab the half and then still be able to bend it. So uh, these are actually in my opinion a little bit more difficult to shuffle for me than my Margaret Peterson, which does make me more inclined to um, trim them because I do want to obviously use them because I'm quite enamored of them. Uh, I don't want to be hindered from that by hating to shuffle them. <laughs> but we shall see. So let's take a look here and we'll start with uh, card one. Put Mr. Uh, Raven here at the center of this compass. And you can see, I'll show you the image here. Even it's got a beautiful image for the spread as well as you can see here there. So it's quite beautiful. They've done a beautiful job at the guidebook. Okay, so we have to the east, dawn, childhood, seeing things in a new light, helpful influences, those types of cards there, or, or energies there. To the south, we have warmth, energy, celebration, emotional strength with the ten of, of ties, which is gorgeous. Uh, to the west, we have obstacles, hardships, and letting go of patterns with the world card. And then to the north, we have resistance, negative forces, cold fronts, and harsh conditions with the Empress. So that's an interesting card to have uh, in that position there. So there we have our cards. Where I think, yes, I think they're all in the finder where you can see them. So we can look to the east and see um helpful influences and we have the strength card so uh, that uh, it gives us that idea that we're going to have to go in uh, for into inner strength because uh, that's what they talk a lot about in this particular um, um, well all for me all of them but that's that idea is uh, advancement through courage and patience it says and overcoming fear so we have that message of that that's an energy that's helping us that is going to be a helpful influence us as keeping uh, um, 
connected with uh, our idea of inner strength and what we have inside and a kind of being at one with both our inner and our outer selves, our civilized and our more um, instinctual self uh, that we have there. Uh, to the south, it's like, okay, where is our warmth coming, right? Where is our energy, that, that positive warm energy coming from? And here we have the gorgeous Ten of Tides. I think this is, again, as I said, one of my favorite uh, Ten of Tides period, or Ten of Cups period. Uh, and this is about contentment and fulfillment, uh, blessings and good fortune. I mean, that's a wonderful thing to have warming up, the, you know, energy that's, that's warming up, that's going to help, you know, when we're dealing with these more uh, difficult energies here. Because to the west, we have obstacles. Well, what, what does that mean when we have a, a, the completion, a sense of completion as an obstacle? Um, I particularly like this. Uh, again, not a huge fan always of the art of the world cards. And this one is gorgeous. Um, and so this is definitely... Uh, let me go back here and look again. Obstacles, hardship, and ha letting go of old patterns. Uh, and so what is that telling us that this is... Um what is interesting is that this uh, particular card has her standing within the world to where you can't even hardly tell the separation from the world. So uh, that's interesting language to me because I often, when I'm having difficulties and hardship, I often separate myself from the world or attempt to separate myself from the world. So I quite like that imagery there, especially if it's an obstacle or letting go of an old pattern. What that says to me is letting go of that pattern of trying to be separated off from the world in which I'm trying to engage with, right? That's not a pattern that really works. That doesn't mean you can't retreat like with Four of Swords and take a breath, but not that sense of being really separated. So I, I think that that is a, is a nuance to the world card that I would not have gained without this particular imagery. So that's very powerful to me. And then what's interesting is at the very top, we have resistance, negative forces, and cold fronts. Well, how does the uh, the empress imply resistance? Uh, and especially in this particular empress, because we are looking at this particular deck. Um, we have fertility and abundance, all the different things that we think of. Um, harmony and nature, all this kind of thing, but uh, but there is a resistance of the harmony. So that's quite interesting. Uh, that is also the mother energy here. Um, I'm looking at lots of egg-like forms it talks about. The sensual and maternal aspects of woman uh, versus more of the the you know the high priestess energy uh, of woman, uh, and so that may be. And I do uh, connect much more easily to the high priestess energy, f feminine energy, than I do to the emperor. I mean, I do both, uh, but I think that I more intuitively tap into the high priestess than I do uh, the empress energy, and so. Um, that is interesting. Um, maybe that idea of not feeling nurtured, you know, it's been a very long month. I'm definitely feeling run down uh, from just, you know, hospital stays are very exhausting, especially extended ones, um, disruption of schedule, all that kind of thing that leads to that sense of abundance and a nurturing and feeling kind of part and parcel and connected to that kind of world like that is very disrupted right now. So that's kind of how I would read that. And I would probably, because this makes sense to me and the answer lies within the question uh, I would probably let's just go ahead and do it because I would probably pull a card and say okay what do I need to do about that obviously some of it's just getting back into routines again which is falling into place now um, with, with things kind of easing off um, not being having to be gone as much anymore because mom's back home all those things reasserting itself it's going to naturally bring back harmony but I might pull a card and say okay you know what is a way 
way forward uh, to, to cease that. Uh, and here we have the Eight of Tides, which is a going off on a new journey, right? Now this is in some ways a very dark Eight of Tides or Eight of Cups. I love the Eight of Cups because I don't see the Eight of Cups as a negative going away. I see um, going off on a journey uh, of self-discovery, which it does talk about, letting go of the past and kind of moving forward into a new way, uh, which I quite like that. And we can see the, the sun coming up here. So I do think that that is, it kind of reaffirms that idea of what I was saying of kind of just moving, the, the way forward is going to take care of things as it is just by moving forward but being aware of that circumstance can be very helpful so there we have that uh, example of this particular um, spread and I think it's quite nice one uh, so yeah, I quite like that. It's something I could see myself using again. But let's take a quick peek. Uh, this is already a really long video, so I'm just going to go for it and take a look at the uh, Fire and Smoke 5 card spread and just see what that one is like. All right, so uh, because so I would say that that sort of getting back on track in general uh, for me, because that's what we saw in the last reading, is that idea of needing to get back on track, get more in balance, more in tune with the world around me, and so on and so forth. So I think that can be the focus of this, just to kind of get a feeling of it, right? Oh, and I just blew out the flame. So let me just go ahead and get a good shuffle in before I relight it. Yeah, I'm definitely leaning towards trimming because these are quite difficult uh, for me to shuffle between the, the thickness of the deck and the height of the deck. Uh, it's actually uncomfortable for me to shuffle and I don't want that to keep me from using the deck. So more than likely these lovelies are going to be trimmed and if show, so I will show that at the end of this video. Okay, so let's, since now I got a good, some good shuffles in, let's go ahead and light this again. And so we're going to just look about ways for me to get down that road from the Eight of uh, Tides. So the first card at the base is the kindling or the sort of resources available. And here we have the fire card. So that's pretty cool. The Ace of Fire. We have that sense of uh, following my passions, doing, you know, tapping into my creative energy. That's going to kind of get that uh, step going again. That's my resource, right? That's the wood that's at the bottom here. And the next card is the spark or the inspiration or what's going to kind of light the fire and what's interesting is that we have war so because this is a positive position in terms of it's about where's my inspiration going to come from then I'm going to look at the more positive aspects of 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 war and of the emperor energy which to me is about um, taking uh, making order out of chaos uh, which to me would probably be about stopping the war and getting along to the business of building and so there's a lot of chaotic energy a lot of unsettlement a lot of not being in structure and I need to get that structure back again uh, and so that makes certainly makes sense and and once I get that things reorganized that for me is often about cleaning my desk space, cleaning my uh, workspace, getting everything fresh and in order, uh, sitting down with my bullet journal and getting my plans in order. Uh, all of that kind of energy can help me to uh, start moving forward and is going to give me that spark to start being able to tap into creative things again. Then we're going to look at the flame, which is the action or the commitment to projects. It's the diligence. It's the actual work. And what's interesting here is that we have the five of uh, gardens here, which is like the five of coins. Now, what's, what I think is what I do think is interesting from the last reading is we have that idea in, in I think it was the um, west position, that idea that sometimes I um, 
disengage uh, and don't become, you know, really um, fully engage in the world when, when things are difficult, which is understandable. And this is a card of disengagement, but because this is in a place of where is, the, where is my action going to be, uh, then I would see this card, which is a shadow card, in light because it's in a position of, of light. And so this to me would say I, that re-engagement again, that kind of getting back into the swing of things and engagement with people other than, you know, hospital people and family, uh, which family is good. It's good to be engaged with family, but just kind of getting back into the groove of things and re-engaging in my normal active life is going to help to bring that about. It's going to be that active energy that I need. The fourth card is the smoke card. This could be obstacles and delays uh, to things. And here we have the six of winds, which is kind of going off into new horizons, right? It's going off, uh, which I love this particular. You can see there's one landscape to the other and kind of moving off. But maybe I need to stay and kind of deal with and work with the landscape I'm in and not uh, go off and go sightseeing somewhere, right? <laughs> um, so we could look at it that way. And then the last would be the the results card or the um, ashes it talks about. What are the results? What is the, the catharsis, the victory, the completion um, that we might have? And uh, here we have the magician, uh, which is a manifestation, right? We're going to manifest, uh, have an actual manifestation of, of being able to see the effects of, of kind of taking care of this uh, issue and getting myself moved into a better position. I get I can't think of any better thing to show up as a victory thing. Uh, I have everything I need to manifest it, and it will get manifested. I just need to kind of work through these areas to get myself back on track from a very long month, and actually a very long uh, couple months between my grandma and my mom and everything. It's been a, a long month, a long summer, and it's kind of neat because we are going into fall, and that does, I think, um, touch on... Uh, the new fall energy, I think that it's, it's a good time to just start fresh and, and tap into for what to me is a very productive and, and high energy time period, which is the beautiful level of fall, of, of fall which I adore. So uh, there we have, uh, look at the two. I quite like these spreads. I can see myself using uh, these spreads as well. And so I hope you like taking a peek at them. Uh, stay tuned for seeing these cards trimmed. Okay, so here is the finished trimmed deck, well, including this one as well. So here is the trimmed deck. People ask how I do it. I use a pair of scissors as well as a corner rounder. And this is a Katamaro Pro. Uh, it has three sizes on it, and I use the small size, which is, I believe, three millimeters. So that is how I trim them. Uh, here you can see an uh, untrimmed card, it's just the art card here, and you can see not a ton was taken off. Uh, you've got, you know, from here to here, from here to here. Uh, and I really didn't trim these off because I really disliked the way they looked untrimmed. It was actually uncomfortable to shuffle them, and, uh, you know, there's no point in having a deck that I don't like to shuffle. So that's the main reason. Plus this is the way that I like cards, to have a bottom title and to not have borders around the edges. Now when you compare this to a Llewellyn card, you can see it's just a hair smaller. And by a hair, I do mean a, just a hair. You can see a little bit of that purple right here. So just a real thin, oops, there you go. Very thin amount, wider, uh, but it is uh, t taller uh, than a Llewellyn card. So still a nice size card. The image itself is a just about the same size, just a little thinner than a Llewellyn card. And then, of course, we have that. So that's actually a really nice uh, size a deck. You can see that the back uh, did not get ruined. Now, you can look even here and see that the um, the image on the back is slightly offset 
Uh, so we have a thinner here and a thicker on this side. It's, it's just very imperceptible, but you can also see that when it's trimmed, even though I trimmed from this side, you can see that the whole card was slightly offset. And that's held true with all of the cards. Uh, so we have a little thinner on this side than on this side, but I trimmed for the image and not for the back. Otherwise, you know, you could even that up, but you're going to lose a little bit of your image. Um, it does not bother me enough to do that. Uh, and it was consistent across all the cards, so at least it's an even offset. But I, you know, it's more important to me to have the image uh, straight than to worry about that slight difference in the back. So there we have, let's just lay them out real quick the way we had them in the other one so that you can just kind of see. I should have, sometimes I bring them back in when I'm partially done so you can compare them to fully realized cards, but uh, I just kind of what got into a roll and went with it. They don't shuffle quite as perfectly as on, whenever you trim a deck, there's a little bit of a less of a smooth um, shuffle on cards. And especially if it's a stiffer card, and this card stock is stiffer. It doesn't have as much of a bend. So that even if you look, even though this was close to the same size, it's much easier to shuffle even large because see that nice bend? And that gets you a really beautiful a rifle shuffle, easy rifle shuffle. Uh, whereas this deck, even when it was untrimmed, there's not much of a bend of quite stiff cards. Now some people like that, especially if you overhand shuffle. But in terms of rifle shuffling, it's not that great. Oops, that was just badly done. Uh, and it definitely uh, exaggerates when they are trimmed. Uh, so probably much of my shuffling will be overhand with some rifles just in between. So if we put this back here in the middle and go with our east, right, our south, our west, and our north, you can see where before it was pretty much smack uh, from top to bottom. It's We haven't saved a ton off of the top and bottom, uh, but it is enough to make it fit quite well into my, um, onto my reading table, which is important to me because I do many, many video readings uh, for clients. Uh, and so that's gonna work real well for a large tarot reading. So, for example, when I do a large tarot reading, and I do one, two, three, I'll adjust that as needed, then I do fire, air, water, fire, air, water, and earth. And then I like to do an above and a below. And so there, you can see it actually fits quite well. It does cut off some of the, the name here. I could go up a little bit further, kind of adjust this to get a little bit more. But it's pretty good. I will certainly uh, take that. Uh, certainly perfectly doable in terms of doing a large tarot reading and I would have no issue using this deck, which is important, right? Uh, because um, that's what I want to do with it, is actually use it. So you can see it <clears throat> all done. <clears throat> Excuse me. At some point, I'll, I'll probably want to edge it in something, uh, but I'll have to find out exactly kind of what color I would need to edge that in, because um, it would really probably need to match this top green kind of part around the edge. So that will be for another day when I consult with Miss Atsi, who is very good at it. So there you have it. I think it's very stunning. Again, I actually didn't think that the white borders was bad around it. Uh, I don't trim off all decks like that. You can see my Margaret Peterson has borders, and I have really no intention of trimming that. 
and, uh, but this was actually really uncomfortable between the length, the thickness of the cards, and the stiffness of the cards. Uh, it was not fun to shuffle. So that was this was more of a trim from necessity, but it looks really gorgeous. So no regrets there. Uh, so thank you for watching, and I hope that you have an absolutely wonderful day.